Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna review another OBD2 scanner, which is gonna be A30M by X2. We have a dongle here, so you can install the app on your phone, and your phone will be connected to this device using Bluetooth. So there are many different type of OBD2 scanners on the market. Some of them only covers reading the code on engine transmission and sometimes ABS. Some of them, they do cover the live data as well. So it's really important to know what sort of coverage and what sort of software you have on that scanner before buying it. So today in this video, I'm gonna connect this scanner on the car. We will see what is the coverage. I'm gonna show you the special functions and we will try the special functions to see if they work as well or not. For checking the specification on this device and the price, you can find the link for this product on the video description. Before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. For finding our online courses, please have a look at the first comment down below, or you can find the link in video description as well. I'm gonna connect the device to OBD2 connector. So as you see, as soon as I connected the device, on the screen is showing me the voltage of the battery as well, which is okay right now. It's already connected. Ignition switch is on. I have the application installed on my phone as well, but because I wanted to record this video, I installed it on my tablet as well. This tablet is Android, but I tested the application on iPhone as well. It worked with no issues. As you see, any scan right here is the app for this scanner. When you click on it, this is the main page of this app. So the first thing that I liked about this scanner is that the design of the application itself is in landscape. So this is gonna give you a better view, specifically when you are diagnosing, when you are reading the live data, having the application in this orientation is gonna give you a better view of the content. So I've seen many other scanners, they give you the application in this direction, just like this. That one, I'm not saying that one is bad, but this one is more easy to read. On the screen, on the first page, as you see, you have the diagnostic at the middle. So you can go for the auto scan from here or diagnostic for selecting the systems from there. On the left, you have the special function. Update is up here and the setting. The first thing is after having the app installed, you need to make sure to perform the update. So if I click on this one right now, You see, there is no update because I just updated the application. But the first time that you install the app, you need to perform the update because if you don't, when you go for the special functions or for the vehicle diagnostic, you will see no cars or no items. So perform the update first, then go for the diagnostic. Let's go for the diagnostic first. I'm gonna go for auto scan to see if this device can detect the car with no manual selection. Because this is very good for DIY users as well when DIY users are trying to diagnose the car sometimes it's going to be a little confusing to detect the car some companies they make it even more difficult so having the scan tool detect the car model like what you see right now it's really really helpful the car is already detected is a Ford Fiesta 2010 and the engine capacity VIN number is detected as well so this is perfect so far so when we are doing the diagnostic we have some options over here for automatic scan, for system selection, for trouble code description and vehicle information. When you go for the system selection, you have a list of all systems that might be installed on this car. So you can go individually one by one for the engine and transmission, brake system, airbag and so on. But if you wanna do the diagnostic, you can just go for automatic scan and a scan tool will start performing the diagnostic for all systems on this car. As you see on diagnostic, there is no code for the engine. There are three codes for the ABS. So all good. So this is everything that we got. All these units with the green tick, it means they are okay. There is no code, no DTC. But these ones at the top, it means we do have these fault codes. So if you wanna get a report, you can just click on DTC report and get a report from the fault codes. Otherwise, you can perform the clear DTC. If you click on this one, we're gonna erase the codes. But of course, we need to remember that we cannot 
erase the codes if they are active. So right now we have one less file code on the ABS. If you click on that one, we have two file codes right here, which are active. So in these cases, when we have an active code, we need to fix the issue, then we can erase the file code. So, so far so good. The scan tool covered all the systems. This is what I wanted to make sure that the scan tool covers all the systems, not only the engine and transmission. So if you go back, let's go for the system selection to see what else we have. For example, on here, if I select the engine, we have the ECU information, reading the code, erasing the code, and live data. So, of course, these two are very similar to what we had, but this is only for engine. If I click on the live data, I have all the live data shown in here. For example, if I select some of them, let's say accelerator pedal sensor 1 and sensor 2, so right now I have these two shown in here. So the value right now that we are getting from the accelerator pedal sensors is zero. If I press the accelerator pedal, as you see, the value is changing. So this is the percentage. We can go for voltage as well. Okay, this is showing how far I am pressing the accelerator pedals. So I started the engine. Engine is running right now. Have a look at the live data to see how it works right now. We have the engine coolant because I just started the engine. Engine is cold. This is the temperature. This is the sensor signal. And if you scroll down, you see the oxygen sensors, oxygen sensor one, sensor two, engine RPM, fuel trim, and so on. These are basically the live data that this scanner is showing us on this Ford when engine is running. I'm gonna select one more system, for example, airbag live data so these are the live data for the airbag one of the most important live data that we need for the airbag is reading the airbag internal resistance for the airbags and for the pretensioners for example right here you see front driver knee airbag the resistance value is 2.3 which is exactly within the range but right here we have the curtain airbag and resistance value is 65 it means that there is something wrong on curtain airbag so as you see this scanner is showing those ones for us as well and the live data for other components other airbags or for the pretensioner as well so we have all other systems i'm not going to go for all of them so if we go back one of the most important functions for scanners is a special function so you see the special function over here many times after replacing some components you need some sort of adjustment or calibration or reset that should be done through the special function. As you see, these are all the special functions for this device. So it doesn't mean that all these special functions are available on this Ford. These are everything that this scanner covers. So you see that power balance, ABS bleeding, TPMS reset, injector coding, Windows initialization, electric parking brake is really important too when you want to change the brake pads on some cars with EPB on rear wheels you have to perform the EPB release you need to release the electric parking brake with a scanner so this is going to be for that seat calibration oil reset and many many others so if we try some of them right now for example if you go for steering angle sensor calibration you need to select the car from here I go for Australia for Ford auto selection so here i have two options anti-lock braking system or power steering so basically when you are about to perform the calibration on a steering angle sensor you need to see which type of a steering system you have if you have electric power steering like this car that we have today you need to go for this item for performing the calibration if you don't have electric power steering you need to do it from abs system so i go for here a special function of course steering angle sensor calibration calibrate the straight ahead position for the absolute steering angle sensor by using this procedure yes do you want to do it yes of course turn the ignition switch on it is on so we want to make sure that the steering wheel and front wheels are straight within plus minus five degrees then press ok complete ignition switch off and 
press OK. Ignition back on and press OK. Again off. Successful procedure and everything is done. This was the procedure for steering angle sensor calibration. She's done already successfully with this scanner. Let's see if we can try another one on this car. Another special functions that can be very helpful is ECM reset. Sometimes you have replaced some components and you want to perform the ECM reset to erase the logic stored in the ECM and start everything all over again. So you can go by this special function. So as you see, we are on powertrain control system and reset PCM is actually for resetting the adaptive values on PCM. So if I click on this one, as you see, resetting will clear land values in the PCM, such as idle and fuel. So it means sometimes, for example, you have mass airflow sensor problem, mass airflow sensor will give wrong information and PCM keeps injecting more fuel. Sometimes faulty oxygen sensor, these two and some other sensors can affect the injection quantity. So after replacing those ones, you can perform the PCM reset to erase the learned value. If you do it, PCM will just start learning all over again based on the new part that you have installed. So if you click on the yes right now, turn the ignition switch to off position. Okay, successful procedure. That was it. And the reset function was completed as well. So this is it. We tried a couple of different special functions and we did the diagnostic as well. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you are thinking to get this scanner or if you have this scanner and you needed some help to start using it. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe the channel and have a look at the channel page for more videos.